गुड इवनिंग मैम क्या गुड इवनिंग फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल देर इज अ लॉर्ड ऑफ टॉक ऑन नेबरहुड एंड दैट टू ड्यूरिंग द इलेक्शंस इन द पास्ट फ्यू इंटरेक्शंस यू हैव गिवन अ लॉर्ड ऑफ इंसाइट्स ऑन कालापन इश्यू एंड सक्षतम वैली कैन यू प्लीज थ्रो सम लाइट ऑन द टचतीबो आइलैंड आल्सो आई हैव अ कपल ऑफ क्वेश्चंस ओके कुड यू प्लीज आंसर ओके uh mam my first question is why kachatibu issue has been in the news and what is the occasion mam okay why kachatibu is in news my answer is it is in news all the time okay okay but why now because right now the use of the term should be seen in context of the elections two important references one uh the chief minister of tamil nadu he wrote a letter to the prime minister to see if we can retrieve this island back from sri lanka second prime minister himself during the debate on no confidence motion has uh, talked about kachha thivu island targeting rahul gandhi mm. so these two occasions have again brought kachha thivu on the headlines mm. in the newspapers in magazines mm. you can see these things mm. okay ma'am what is kachatibu first of all and what is the strategic importance of kachatibu okay kachatibu is an island and where it is located fine yes i told you if you want to understand politics look at the map mm. and also for the civil services aspirants who are giving prelims mm. because this place is in news they should look on map some locations which i will suggest oh yes ma'am fine so first of all india sri lanka maritime boundary oh. fine and india sri lanka they are divided by that park strait mm. so on one side is bay of bengal kachha thivu lies on that side mm. and the location of kachha thivu when you are trying to understand two locations will be required mm. okay. one is you can see rameshwaram and uh, kachha thivu is located on the north eastern part of rameshwaram okay another location of tamil nadu you should see is ramnathpuram or ramnad district okay. fine and uh, kachha thivu island what is a connection that since a uh, british time this island was under the zamindari of raja of ramnad okay so to understand you should know the location and what we see indian ocean has become a geopolitical hot spot right because of uh, us china and indian triangle hence its relative importance has increased these days yes. and uh, along with the strategic importance of course it is a permanent point of discussion in the domestic politics and in politics of tamil ma'am can you please tell us about the history of the the issue and then what is the controversy all about okay so first of all let me talk 
talk about controversy. The controversy is that in 1974, as a part of India-Sri Lanka Maritime Boundary Agreement, Kacha Thivu has been recognized by India mm -hmm. as Sri Lanka's territory. Now, there is a controversy that how can it has been handed over to Sri Lanka, which has been Indian territory. Mm -hmm. Now, those who say it is an Indian territory, what is their argument? Their argument is historically, it has been administered by Raja of Ramnad. Okay. But we should not be listening only one part of a story. Because if Sri Lanka is making a claim, they have their own story. Their story is that there was a time when it was ruled by the king from Jaffna. Okay. okay. So... That is a story and uh, when Jay Lalita was the chief minister, she has filed a PIL in Supreme Court and has questioned the transfer of territory. Now there is a constitutional angle here because you cannot transfer territory without constitutional amendment. Yes. This was the decision of Supreme Court in Berubari case. But we must also know one more thing. We do not require a constitutional amendment if territory is a disputed territory where our claims are not fully established okay so those who say government of india cannot transfer it like that their perception is kacha thivu has been india's territory mm. their argument is it has been under the administration of raja of ramnad mm. but if we look from perspective of uh, government of India at that point of time, they considered that India cannot make mm. a clear-cut claim. Okay. Because if we have historical basis, mm. Sri Lanka also have historical basis. So, since... It is more coming under the category of disputed territory. And if a category, if a territory is disputed, you don't require amendment. Okay. So, amendment was not done. Mm. So, it's very important that we should get the basics right. Okay. If we can make claim that since British time, it has been uh, uh, administered by India. Mm. Sri Lanka can also make claim. They made claim of much older time. So, it is all about the competing claims and the interpretations. Fine. Amidst all this politics, however, we always forget two very important issues. Okay. The importance is less about territory. Um, yes, it is more about the rights of the fishing persons there. And uh, another thing is, we should also not ignore that between India and Sri Lanka, there are two boundary agreements okay one is 74 another is 76 
and in 76 we got a bigger territory which is known as wage bank oh and where it is located it is located near kanyakumari so this region is in the side of arabian sea okay. which is more important from the perspective of security mm -hmm. the amount of land that we have given mm -hmm. in kachha thivu we got many times bigger land okay in more strategically important location plus it is also more important from the perspective of the fishing because the fishes they are more in number here deep so sea. deep sea plus more fishing is there and we got a bigger exclusive economic zone in this extra it's an advantage fine so what happens is it is said half truth is more dangerous yes. Yes. than the complete lie and it is important that people should understand the entire facts and uh, and it is our responsibility that these facts should be told otherwise every politician irrespective of the party they will try to play with the facts fine so when you evaluate kachha thivu versus wage bank hmm. obviously it is no loss for india okay ma'am this is an expert opinion because you are a political analyst and also an academic um, uh, you know teacher um, but on the emotional front of the people, do you think it has been a mistake on the part of India? And what should be our approach towards this? I do not think it is a mistake because you have to see in totality. You have to see give and take. Oh. Okay. And if we are giving a part of territory... Though we are claiming it is our territory, but that is not proven. Okay, it is a disputed territory. But in return, what we got is wage bank. We have to be happy. Yeah. So, emotions of the people needs to be understood. But we should also not consider that people are fooled. Or we should not play with the emotions. Fine. So, how? How we can be on the right track? When we give the correct information oh, yes. and the proper information, everybody will understand. But if things are put in a manner which are uh, politically motivated, mm. everything becomes problematic mm. and it is not just it's a it's not just a domestic issue we also have to see our relations with mm. sri lanka and the message see uh, this agreement was done in 1974 in 1971 there was a creation of bangladesh mm. and the image was developed in the eyes of the smaller neighbors that India is a hegemonic neighbor. Oh. Fine. So, we had to do some image building exercise for some broader long term gain. So, when you calculate loss and gain, there are many gains which are not tangible. There are intangible gains and uh, that is why this decision was taken. And in Bay of Bengal Sea, on that part, we also have Andaman and Nicobar. Ah, yes, Fine. So, we can take care of the security interest. Mm. This side, there is Sri Lanka and Maldives and Lakshadweep. So, here we got a big territory with the exclusive economic zone so we should refer 
two agreements together 74 and 76 agreement and again i am emphasizing emotions should not be manipulated fine and you have to give the complete picture without hiding the facts and again i repeat half truth is more dangerous <laughs> ma'am one last question how this whole thing can influence the elections that's a mystery for me because uh, during the election itself the whole thing has come again see elections need narratives uh, political parties they have to raise the emotions fine uh, unfortunately there is nothing very strong narrative different parties they tried to build different narratives but uh, nothing worked fine so people try to make narratives there was an effort by the parties uh, the ruling party in uh, center as well as the ruling party in the state of Tamil Nadu. But I don't think it has become such a big concern. It has lost the steam. But obviously, uh, from a strategic point of view, we should never lose the sight of this particular issue. Ma'am, do you think India should be getting Kachatibu back? Point number one, what is the need to get it back? <laughs> Fine. The second thing, is it possible to get it back? That is a bigger question. So, it is not possible to get it back. Why? Because we have entered into an agreement with Sri Lanka. So, when you enter into any treaty agreement, we need to you deposit it with United Nations. And international community become a stakeholder. Fine. So, India withdrawing from the agreement, this is going to dent India's image. What image we are trying to project? That we believe in rule of law and we are targeting China for violating the rule of law. So, neither politically nor otherwise it is possible. You have to see the cost and benefit analysis. Okay. So, we should not even think of taking it back and uh, we have to see like how our interests are being harmed okay so one thing is maybe the rights of fishermen and if we see 1974 agreement it says that fishermen can fish in the historical waters and one problem that nobody is pointing out that Indian fishermen are using the mechanized trawler. Again, pro problem is further deep. That is, it is not the fisherman. Now, it is fishing that is happening on commercial terms. So, sometimes we have to understand the genuine concerns of our smaller neighbors and uh, we have to understand that ultimately who all are working what are the forces why this issue is emerging fine so at least uh, i can say that we have to find out from where the agenda is set okay so, we also need to see the angle of commercial fishing, the trawlers and its impact on the sustainability, the blue economy, which we talk about and which is a very important principle of India's doctrine saga. Uh, that was an expert opinion, expert insight on the geography, on the history and also the 
state of mind of the people thanks a lot ma'am and i would like to come back again on another question you're welcome thank you